Hey there DIYers, welcome back to another episode of DIYs with Sonia. Today I'm thrilled to share with you some of my latest dupes that I have done on my channel. If you love affordable creativity and getting that high end look without breaking the bank, make sure you keep watching this marathon video as I share tons of it tons of it. From high-end dupes to all of Atelier inspired designs, we've got it all covered. And if you're looking to spruce up your space with restoration hardware vibes, you're in the right place. So grab your glue guns and paintbrushes because it's time for a DIY marathon. Let's get crafting and transform our spaces one project at a time. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more budget-friendly inspirations. So let's get right into it. My friends and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. My name is Sonia and today I'm super excited to be bringing you a video that I have been trying to make for a while. Uh, I just needed a lot of time because I knew it was going to take a lot of time to get this done. So we are going to be making some paper mache bowls, two different types of bowls. One, I'm going to use a mold type of thing, and the other one, I'm going to mold an existing um, bowl that I have. And the type of paper mache that I'm going to be using is equal parts of water and glue to toilet paper. I went out and bought a loads of toilet paper I did only end up using four rolls all together for the two projects and I had a little bit left over but um, this was very simple to do pretty much everything was on hand I have a big jug of uh, school glue from my daycare so I was able to use that and then water and obviously toilet paper and I just bought the cheapest toilet paper uh, at the supermarket so you want to mix all of this together and to create almost like a clay type of consistency and you don't want it to be too wet. If it's too wet, you might want to drain some of the water off. <coughs> I also want to mention that today's video is in collaboration with one of my best friends here on YouTube as well as in real life, uh, Sandra. She just lives a couple streets over from me. We used to live on the same street and her channel is um, DIYs at the Schwollen's Nest. If you have not checked out Sandra's channel, make sure you do so. She is super talented and truly an inspiration to me when it comes to all things DIY. She is someone that I can always count on and figuring things out with me if I need an advice on DIYs or really anything else in life. So make sure you check her out. Um, he, I will leave a link to, to, her, to her channel down below so you can check out this video as well as any other video that you might be interested in checking out. Make sure you check out her shorts as well because they are really, really good. So me and her were talking about how uh, we wanted to ch uh, try out some of these um, paper mache projects that you see all over the high-end stores and they're quite pricey you can even buy some off of Etsy and um, but I just thought that I could definitely make this out myself for a lot cheaper so here are some of my inspirations that I'm going to be trying to recreate and like I said I'm using toilet paper glue and water um, I think Sandra might be using a different type of uh, paper mache materials so make sure you check out her channel like I said it will be her channel will be linked down below um, that way you can get a couple different ideas on a couple different things you can use to create our projects so for my paper mache, like I said, I'm using toilet paper and glue and water and you just want to kind of get that um, clayish consistency. You want it to be wet but not like dripping, dripping wet. Um, and um, the toilet paper does dissolve quite quickly so you will be able to see how much of it you actually need. And keep mixing it until you re uh, reach that paste consistency. For my first project, I'm using this bowl to create a mold and I'm going to add some clear cling wrap 
uh, onto it but I did have to use a little bit of tape just to keep it in place because I did find that it was moving for me a little bit too much um, so I guess you could probably use parchment paper too but I'm pretty sure you would have to tape that up as well and this did give it a little bit of more of a smoother finish on the inside I do want to mention that if you are planning on doing this project, give yourself at least a week, week and a half for it to cure. Mine took about, uh, for this bowl, it took about a week. For the other one, because there were two steps to it, um, it took a, a week and a half. And I did end up having to put it in the oven to cure as well for about um, 40 minutes while it was running at 200 degrees and then I let it just uh, sit in it until it was uh, until I was ready to use it I turned off the oven so it sat in the warm oven for a couple hours now when I'm creating this bowl I wanted one side to be a little bit longer uh, or taller and the other side to be a little bit shallower so that's why you have two different sides and you can don't worry about being perfect on the edges because you can always cut them down, send them down a little bit um, to uh, to the size that you need it or to to have it as clean cut as you want it. So here is what mine look like all finished and you just want to cover all the spots so you don't have any holes um, and now it's time to dry. So. While that's drying, I'm going to be working on this bowl. I've had this bowl for a very long time. It kind of got damaged over the years. So I'm just giving it a good cleanup. And I'm going to uh, cover it up with uh, the paper mache. I'm not creating a mold, so I don't need to put any uh, cling wrap onto it. I'm just going to start adding paper mache spreading it out and making sure that especially on the inside all the areas are covered um i well you kind of want to make sure all the um there's no holes in it whether it's on the inside or the outside and if you want to smooth it out a little bit more you can always wet your hands and go over it with a wet hand more i was okay with having it look a little rougher because I was adding some antiquing wax to it so I wanted to uh, bring out the roughness out a little bit more with the antiquing wax. I did work on the inside and the top first then I let that dry and like I said it took um, about I waited for about a week and a day and it was still a little wet on the inside but I was able to flip it over because the top was dry and then I worked on the the bottom part of it and that took a couple days. There was just a small amount of stuff that I had to add and it took, like I said, three days in. It was still wet so I did end up putting it into the oven at 200 degrees um, and I let it cure for about 40 minutes and then I turned the oven off and just left it in there for a couple hours until I was ready to um, add some uh, antiquing wax to it.
this is what the other side looks like and I'm working on uh, covering that up and I also have a couple spots uh, left that need to be covered up as well because it was kind of hard to uh, flip it over without damaging the parts that I had covered before it got dry. So I'm just going to cover those up now. And I'm not going to lie, this DIY was very, very relaxing to me to make. I quite enjoyed just molding it and working all the, smoothing out all the areas. And it's just, I found it very, very relaxing. all done and now I'm going to let that cure um, for a couple days <laughs> and while that's curing this one had cured and it's dry so I'm just going to uh, cut off some of the parts that are kind of sticking out I still want to keep the roughness on it you can even smooth it out by sanding it a little bit if you want a more of a smoother look to, I'm going to add some paint, very watered down paint because my paint was dry. Uh, so I just added some water uh, to it to loosen it up. And it's just a light beige color. This part can be up to you how you want to uh, start um, paint it or even add some wax to it really you can go gray make it look more a little bit like concrete totally up to you i'm going to go with a more of a antique look um, by adding <clears throat> like i said some of this beige and then i'm going to go in with a little bit of uh, dark wax just to uh, um, add a little bit of uh, character to it. So I was trying to cover up as much of that white because I really didn't want too much of it showing. So I did use, as you saw, a brush as well as a sponge just to uh, blend everything in and get into all the little crevices. so happy with the way this piece turned out it's so unique and one of a kind and I can't wait to use it in my decor I think it's gonna look really good with um, some little fillers in there maybe a little bit of potpourri or even a nice candle to sit on it um, as a base or a, a cover for the candle as a tray I said I guess for the bowl I have decided just to use the uh, the wax the any sloan dark wax or antiquing wax and i did go with a brush first and then i do move on to the sponge as well and i am applying 
lots at the beginning and then just trying to spread that all out and then I'm going to go with a sponge and just accent a little uh, areas where um, there's like a clumping of the paper mache just to make that pop out a little bit more I did end up using this wider brush I just think it uh, made the job go a little bit faster and I think the bristle brush, a um, little chippy brush, would work well as well. So the inside is almost done and a little bit more blending and now I'm going to do the outside. I really do love the way this was shaping out and like I said you can do this any way you want you can leave it just wide you can paint it one solid color um, you can use a couple different colors and blend to make it more like a concrete look um, the world is your oyster how you want this to turn out I went with more of this look because it kind of goes well with my current decor well i hope you guys enjoyed these quick and easy paper mache um, diys make sure you check out sandra's channel because she will have even more uh, to share with you so that way you can get tons of inspiration for your next diy project if you're not subscribed to my channel please i would love it if you consider subscribing becoming part of my youtube a family i share tons of high-end dupes here as well as furniture makeovers and some dollar tree diys so i hope you find something that you enjoy and here is how this looks and i think i'm going to keep it on my coffee table in my family room i'm not sure if i'm gonna add anything to it because i just love it as it is well i hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs if you, up if you did and again don't forget to check out sandra's channel and i will see you all in my next video thank you so much for watching i appreciate you all so much hello my friends and welcome back to my channel welcome if you're new i feel like it's been a hot minute since i posted a new video uh, but today we are diving into some olive atelier dupes and uh, these are high-end uh, look for less diys uh, i have seen olive atelier um, products all across instagram and youtube and unfortunately i'm way too far away from california to be going and shopping there so so I thought I'd recreate some of these products from the items that I have at home. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're stopping by for the very first time. And we are going to get right into this DIY video. So for my very first DIY, I'm going to be using this Dollar Tree bowl. I picked this up right around Valentine's Day. I really love the shape of it, the, how wavy it is, and the size was pretty good as well. And then I was browsing, um, actually watching Shop With Me videos for uh, from Olive Atelier, and I came across one that had a similar shape. I did love the way that looked, so I thought I recreated. Now these are dupes. These are not going to be exactly like the original pieces, but I am more using these pieces as my inspiration. 
So I wanted to add some texture to this bowl as well, um, not just the paint. So I mixed up some of this base, base paint that I had left over from a project um, that I did last year. And I added some flour into it, quite a bit of it, made it really thick. And this gave it a lot of texture. Uh, I painted the inside first and then I flipped it over and painted the outside. So while I'm painting this, I wanted to talk to you guys about where I've been and what I've been up to. So back in January, I posted a um, craft room makeover video. And uh, um, I have um, been back at it, <laughs> making over my craft room, simply because I needed to create some storage for all the overflow of daycare stuff that I have accumulated again. And... Um, I had to pare down some of the craft supplies, of, but to be you know, honest with you, there was a lot of stuff that I knew I just wasn't going to use because I've been either had it for way too long and never ended up reaching for it and uh, or just my style has shifted in a different direction and it was time to let it go and maybe have someone else enjoy it. So I did do donate a lot of my decor uh, pieces that I like I said, we haven't been reaching for, um, to a uh, Goodwill and also my mother-in-law took some, my sister came and took some. So lots of, um, new pl homes for uh, the decor pieces and they did not end up in a garbage. And I did the same thing with my, some of my craft supplies. I did repur uh, repurpose some of them for the daycare DIYs, well, daycare crafts or even sensory bins uh, that I could. And then the rest of the stuff was uh, donated. And now I am just taking my time in organizing everything, just making sure that everything has its home. So that way, when I am putting stuff away, I know exactly where it goes, especially um, the daycare supplies and bins and all that stuff. So while I was doing that, I did completely dismantle my craft room again and had to put it back together. So I had no space, uh, no area where to do uh, DIYs. So I'm back at it again. The space is not perfect by any means. It is a work in progress, but at least I have uh, space to do my own DIYs. So just so you kind of know what's been going on, and I did take the Easter weekend off as well, just to relax and kind of decompress. So once the bowl was all painted up, I did let it dry a little bit, not completely, just because I needed some of that beige beige paint for blending and then I took my craft sponge and I added some water to it made it nice and wet and then I added a couple different paint um, uh, blobs to my tray there was iced cappuccino there was black um, and then I think I was going to do a bronzy color as well but I did not end up using it uh, because um, I just had no use for it. I was thinking about adding gray into it, but changed my mind. But I did have to go and add a little bit of white just because I was finding that the black was a little too dark. So it did make a little bit of a gray paint, but I ended up blending it with a lot of uh, uh, the beige that was left in there and the uh, iced cappuccino. So then um, it wasn't as gray as it started off with. So I hope um, you guys like, like I said, like this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you are enjoying it so far. Now, one advice that I can give you with this uh, sponging technique is blend, 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 blend. And blend as, mu as much as you want until you um, achieve the look that you're going after.
love the way this turned out. I love all the texture and let me show you how I style it in my space. For my next DIY, I am using a thrifted vase. I picked this up a long time ago. I've been using it around the house decorating, but I was just finding that the clear glass wasn't really working for me. Um, to add to it, I'm going to be adding some of this rope and I'm going to be again um, using the same beige paint that I used for the first project. Uh, I'm using that paint for all the projects that I'm making right now. I did lo do love the lip on this uh, vase and I thought it would be perfect for what I had in mind. Um, you've probably seen all of these um, vases if you do uh, check out all of Atelier, he has a ton of vases, a ton of vessels, um, and they some of them have this rope uh, design on them. Anyways, it looks like a rope design. Now, if I had to do this all over again, I would probably try and use a thinner rope. However, I had this rope, I had thicker rope, and then I had a really thin rope, um, nothing in between. So I made it work with this one, but like I said, if I was to do it again, I would probably try and get a bit of a thinner rope, maybe a little bit thicker than a twine, but uh, not as thick as this one. And this one isn't even the thickest uh, uh, rope. I don't even know what kind of rope this is. Root rope. Um, so anyways, just uh, an FYI, if I was to do it again, I would probably use a thinner rope. Um, I'm spacing this out, um, kind of eyeballing it. Not really any rhyme or reason how I'm spacing it because I do feel that a lot of the, well, all of the pieces that he does sell um appear to be hand men like handmade so um and we know that handmade products aren't in perfect uh, uh shape or perfect uh, spacing or perfect color or anything they have a lot of imperfections it's what makes them so great so that is what i was going for right here as well and like i said i will include a as you saw, include the kind of inspiration pieces um, for my project, so that way you can uh, see um, where where that uh, ideas came from. So once I added all the rope that I intended to add, I proceeded to painting this piece. Like I said, I am using that beige paint that I had painted the first uh, project. Now that this beige paint, I just picked it up at Lowe's. It was one on, I was looking for beige paint and I came across it at their discount shelf because I guess it was mixed up wrong. So um, I... Uh, went ahead and just picked it up because I just use this as base coats for most of my projects. And the brush is just a normal brush that you would buy at Lowe's, nothing special. And I'm going to give it um, a one coat and then I'm also going to paint on the inside a little bit. I always find that with glass vases, if you um, you can almost never have a solid enough coat because there's always that see-throughness if the the inside isn't painted as well. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but um, I found that even with painting and with chalk paint, it always looks like you can see through it. So I like to add a little bit of paint on the inside. Now, I didn't go into detail and paint the whole inside, M primarily just around the opening is where I've kind of concentrated the paint on. Mm -hmm. 
So once um, I finished painting it, I did let it dry completely before I went ahead with the next step. Uh, and for the next step, I am going to use some dirt and a, a paint in a, kind of a sage color. Uh, the paint and sage color will be just to um, add a little bit of um, kind of like a mossy green uh, look to it because I do find that a lot of these vessels when you find them they almost look like they have a little bit of that mossiness on them um, especially the ones that he, some of the ones that he has in, in his uh, store so I liked I wanted to kind of recreate that look so all I'm doing is um, adding dirt and rubbing the dirt on it. Now I did not want it to do this when it was completely wet because I was worried that the paint was going to just come right off. It was coming a little bit off anyways just from rubbing but uh, I was worried that if it was completely wet that it would have um, came off. So, so this and this gives it um I think when you do it with a wet paint and you add the dirt and you let it dry, it's a lot darker look where I was going just more of a dirty look here. So this is the paint that I am going to use and it has a bit of a suede texture to it and I just put it a little bit on a paper towel and I'm dabbing it into dirt just to pick up some of that dirt as well into it and then just dabbing it into areas where the paint um, kind of uh, came off and so I'm applying a heavier coat and then I'm just going to blend it out all throughout the rest of the vase. So here it is and I'm going to show you how I am styling it. I think this will go really well with the rest of my decor. The last piece that I'm going to be working on is this uh, pot and I got this last year during uh, the um, thrift stores uh, garden center in spring when they opened it and they had this and my intentions were to put some lavender in it however never got around to doing it last uh, summer and it's been sitting on my shelf and I absolutely love the little detail that it has on top and on the bottom and I really wanted to kind of bring that out a little bit more than what it was showing here originally I was going to do something different with it um, then I was going to leave it as is because it, it it's it wasn't a bad color but it was just when I tried using it in my decor it just I couldn't make it work with anything that was in my house so off on a shelf we went until I figured out what I was going to to make with it this shape is not necessarily like any shape that I saw on the website but it is um, the finish is very similar to some of the uh, flower pots or pots urns that he had um, in his store um, and um, so I went with that now when right now at uh, on the website you can't actually see any of the products because I guess they're they open it up at shopping at certain times so I just searched up um, 
shopping videos on YouTube and um, or Instagram. Anybody that had tagged uh, the product, I was I would search it up. So that's how I came across uh, some of the items that had given me the inspiration. So as you can see, I am painting this again with that same beige paint. Um, I did use this the paint that I painted the first uh, DIY with, and I just added, so there was some flour in it, and I added a little bit more paint, so it wasn't as thick as the bowl, but it was still had a little bit of texture to it. And it's just nice when I go in with the next paint, it will pick up some of that uh, texture, uh, the, uh, and kind of bring it out more and that is what I wanted here now again I will let this uh, piece partially dry before I move on to adding more paint to it now again with the next paint it will be pretty much the same combination of paint as the other one but I am using paper towel instead of the sponge and you will see how different that will make it uh, because it's just different blending technique and I'm focusing more on certain color versus the other color whereas over there I went more with um, black and a little less um, brown whereas here I'm going to go more with the iced cappuccino then the black and then also adding the white. I did use the brush as you saw to get into all the little crevices and I'm also adding a little bit of black in just some spots where the maybe the paint didn't completely um, cover everything and it just adds a little bit of uh, uh, dimension I guess to it. And I love the way this turned out. I love all the paint combinations on there. Like I said, again, blend, blend, blend. And paper towel is a great tool to use for that. And let me show you how I styled it. I got this tree on Amazon. And it came with a really kind of a cheap pot. And uh, I just elevated the look with a little bit of moss. And this new pot i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know which one was your favorite don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed and i'll see you all in my next video thanks so much hello my friends and welcome back to my channel welcome if you're new my name is sonia and today i'm bringing you some restoration hardware dupes and with these look for less diys not only did i save a ton of money but they were insanely easy to make so i can't wait to share them with you make sure you are subscribed and give me a thumbs up if you are enjoying this video so for the first one i'm going to be using this vase that i had thrifted for dollar ninety for 10.99 i wish it was dollar 99 but 10.99 which i still think it was a great steal i did however manage to break the top of it so i did glue it and i'm going to be cre recreating this look and as you can see these vases are not cheap and uh I think I can do this for a lot less money, obviously. This was that cost me only $10.99. Uh, however, I will make a little change. The color of the vase is very bright white. Um, I wasn't loving 
that brightness so I am going to be creating kind of my own little custom paint um, with creamy and mixing a little bit of white into it just to lighten up the cream so it's not so bright white again this is a dupe this is an inspirational piece you can create it any way you want it to go for me i think the shape was very similar and i really liked the texture that the inspirational piece had on it so i'm going to be using some old ochre um chalk paint uh, it is by any sloan and mine i've had for a very long time so it's gotten really thick because um, it's kind of drying out a little bit now you can thin it out but i actually wanted it to be thick now if you don't have um, chalk paint that is already thicker uh, you can always just take your acrylic paint and add some cornstarch or even baking soda to it and it will thicken it up you can even add some flour to it if you don't have either one of those and you can get a very similar look um, so I'm going to take this old ochre and I'm going to um, add some acrylic white paint to it just like I said um, I didn't quite love the yellowness of the old ochre but I didn't want the brightness of the white paint that I had either so kind of mixing them in to create a little custom paint of my own and because the paint is thick like that it's going to add um, give me the brush stroke design on the vase and that is what's going to create that textured look. So I have been creating a lot of high-end dupes on this channel lately because this is what I feel that you guys want to watch based on the views and the engagement and all that stuff. But if there's any type of video that you are missing that you would like me to create, let me know down in the comments. I will try and accommodate everybody's um, wants and needs. I have been enjoying creating these dupes but because as we all know the everything is so expensive these days and uh, I love decorating I love changing out my decor and this is one way that I can uh, still fulfill that uh, hobby of mine without breaking the bank. So as you can see, this is creating that that textured look and because the paint is so thick, it is actually doing a pretty good job covering it up. I am not going to be doing two coats of this paint because like I said, this is doing a pretty good job of covering it all up. And this vase did have some bubbles on it as well. Uh, just, I think, just the way it was made. So I think that even added more character to it. And now you can see where I had broken it. Um, I had knocked it over, kicked it actually, and it went flying. I'm just grateful that that's all that it broke. And with this chalk paint, it will cover it right up. So I think I'm just about done here. I'm going to give you a bit of a closer look so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, the brush stroke design. I'm just making sure that all the bottom is covered. So here it is, and you can see those little bubbles, and I think this will dry really nicely as well. And I'm going to show you how I styled it in my room. So here it is, you can see the brush strokes, now it's all dry, and I really like it, um, how that turned out, lots of texture on it, and I just have to touch up the top because I did smear some paint off, and I just added some olive tree branches in it. For the next DIY, this is super easy. Uh, no skills required whatsoever. So I had this um, pizza tray from Dollarama and I've used it for several different things. So I just was cleaning it up so it's nice and clean so the paint can stick to it. And I'm going to be recreating this look. So I think when I got my tray, I paid around $2. As you can see, this is $450. And I happen to have some gold paint left over from uh, Christmas. So I'm going to uh, be painting it and that will be it. $2. That's all it cost me. And I think it will give me a pretty close look. 
So originally I was going to use the spun gold and you will see in just a second it wasn't going on the way I had wanted it to go on. Maybe if I added some mod podge to the bottom of it, it would, uh, uh, the paint would stick better, but I was worried if I added mod podge, it would, uh, cover up all the little dents that this, um, tray had this pizza plate had pan had and i kind of wanted it to have all those uh dents and bends in it because it i think it's it would contribute more to that etched look that the original piece had so once i had discovered that this wasn't going the way i had wanted it to go I am going to clean all the paint right off of it and proceed with some spray paint. So here it is and I'm going to spray paint it. I did go outside to do this because I do uh, do my DIYs during nap time most of the time so I didn't <laughs> and of course you don't want to be spray painting inside even though I do have a pretty heavy duty fan right above my uh, craft room I still didn't want it to spray paint inside. So I give this a decent coat. You might have to go in with another coat, but I will let this dry before I switch it and spray paint the other side. And here it is. I think this is a pretty close. Here is a look at the original piece and the inspirational piece just so we can compare the two. I think the lip is a little bit higher, but I think my spray paint color was pretty close and I think the look, it did give me pretty similar look. Now moving on to the last DIY. I love using books, decorative books, to decorate either on on floating shelves or in my hutch or on top of the coffee table fireplace and whatnot so i had seen the this a stack of books and the price is per book uh, and as you can see it is 69 dollars which is not overly uh, you know um, budget breaking or whatnot but i do feel that i can make it for almost free so i just picked out a book from my book stack um i wanted it to have a hard cover and i think this one would work really good i originally wanted to make a couple of them just to give um, a couple different sizes look but i realized once i started doing uh gathering my supplies for this diy that i only had uh, scrap pieces of uh, this um drop cloth i for some reason thought i had a full pack of it but nevertheless uh, you can make as many as you want i'm just going to show you how i made this one and the process would be exactly the same for all the rest of the books that you would want to make so like i said you want to pick a hardcover book i just think that would be easier uh, to work with preferably something that's not as bright colored as this because a little bit was showing and you could also paint the cover uh, in case if you only have the bright colored books and then to create that um, design on uh, on here i am adding a, a good amount of hot glue and just little strips of it but you want it to be fairly thick and you want this to completely dry before you move on to the next step because you don't want to squish it i did mine about inch apart and then once they were dry i added mud podge in the middle in in between and then I'm also going to add Mod Podge on top and bottom. And when I'm applying my um, drop cloth, now this is a linen drop cloth that I picked up at Dollarama. I have used this for many DIYs from pillowcases to table placemats, 
all sorts of stuff, even a, a tablecloth I've made with it. It's I just absolutely love this drop cloth and how versatile it is. If you cannot find any at your local dollar store, Home Depot carries it as well. It's a lot bigger pack and you know, at this point, it might even be cheaper than a Dollarama what I was paying for it because once you calculate the size of the roll. So when you are attaching this, you want it to be very tight. Um, so there's no like loose pieces. It's not curling up anywhere. You want it to go very tight over top of this. So that way it, it can show all the little designs on it. So once I felt like it wasn't moving as much, I ended up adding uh, some Mod Podge over top of it as well. And then once I finished on the top, I went ahead and added some onto the front um, cover and the back cover. Uh, and uh, to keep uh, the linen in place while the Mod Podge is curing. I did give it a little, uh, a couple dots of hot glue on the inside and folded the linen into it. I actually end up using the hot glue for uh, all the all the folds just to to make sure that it stays in place. I'm also going to clip it just to make sure it stays in place. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. it was all done I did go ahead and add some Mod Podge on top of it as well And then like I mentioned, for the folds, I'm going to be hot gluing them. But here I'm just showing you how nicely the design is showing up. And I'm sure most of you know, I and I don't know if people did this here as well, but I grew up in Europe. I moved to Canada when I was 16. And when I um, when we used to go to school, we used to have to even in grade like from one to eight even in high school we used to have to purchase all of our books like the you know the math book the uh, science book all those books and um, in order f because they had to last me a whole year and the covers weren't hardcover or anything like that so we used to get some either butcher paper or wrapping paper or just a really nice paper or even newspaper and wrap the books in it to protect the covers so this is what this had reminded me of doing is wrapping our textbooks for school um, so if you ever wrapped a wrapped a book this is you just do exactly the same thing that you would have done when you were wrapping the book I think this is going to be such a great addition to my decorating. I'm thinking I might use it on a floating shelf just to lift some decor up and it will add also a really nice look to it. Well, guys, let me know what you think. I think this turned out really nice. Again, like I said, I absolutely love the way it looks. I think it's going to be such a great addition to my decor. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And I'll see you all in my next video. Thanks so much for watching.